Hi, today I'm going to tell you things that you need to consider when it comes to designing a price list for your beauty treatments. One thing that you need to think about is your location. I remember when I first started doing a little bit of mobile beauty, I went into different salons in the area and got their price list so that I can use it as a guide. There were a few things on there that didn't really make sense in my head, so I did change the price a little bit. So for example, when it came to their waxing section, the price for a half arm and a full arm or a half leg and a full leg didn't really make sense to me. So I kind of used it as a guide and designed my own. Kind of wanted to price match a little bit as well. Another thing that comes with location is how much your rent costs. So if you, whether you have a salon or you're renting a room, these are things that you need to think about when it comes to designing your price list so that you're able to pay those bills. So location is definitely something that needs to be considered, but I'm gonna give you an example of why for some businesses, location isn't the, the biggest thing that they consider, it's still there. But um, this is something that's real, by the way. I'm in North London. Salon A is charging 15 pound for a Brazilian wax, and then literally one minute down the road, Salon B was charging 45 or 55, I can't remember exactly, but let's just say it was 45 pounds for the same treatment. But it wasn't the same treatment because Salon A was using strip wax. They didn't offer hot wax as a service and the strip wax that they were using cost around five pounds. And the therapist in there was really quick as well. These are all of the calculations that I'm gonna go into detail with throughout the video. Salon B was only doing hot wax when it came to intimate areas. They were using Lycon, so it's a higher quality brand. Um, they weren't double dipping, so they were using more spatulas and they were more hygienic. They had a TV on the wall where you can watch anything you want or listen to the radio. Um, they had a really fancy couch where you can adjust it to however you like to make yourself comfortable. The wax was a lot less painful as well because of the type of wax that was used. Hot wax I generally find is, a lot of people find it less painful. This road, this area in particular was quite mixed. They had some salons that would provide for customers who just want to be in and out. They want an affordable treatment. They don't care what brand you use. They don't care about anything. And then you get, you have other salons in the area where they really care about the quality of the service and the quality of the brands and the products that they use. So depending on where you're located, you need to price accordingly because if you're in an area of London where they really don't care about what brand you're using and you're advertising how this brand's amazing and you're charging more for it because it's that's how much you should be charging for it, you might not get any customers and vice versa as well. If you're in an area where they really care about what brand you're using but you're using more affordable stuff and the clients aren't interested, again, you're not gonna get customers. The next thing that you need to consider is how much the product costs. So with the same example, Salon A, that tub of wax costs five pounds and that you can do like many, many Brazilians with that one tub. They can afford to charge 15 pounds for a Brazilian wax, whereas the other salon cannot price match because they're using Lycon. Lycon is a lot more expensive, so they need to charge accordingly. A lot of brands, what they do, like skincare brands, nail polish brands as well, they give you a guideline of what you can charge. They say this is what you should be charging. Some brands give you a low price and a high price. So for example, if you're located in central London, you use the high price, for example. And then other brands, they don't give you a guide of how much you should charge. They let you decide that, but what they do 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 is they give you a product breakdown so they say for example for a gel polish manicure how much of the base coat you're using in terms of like how much it's actually costing you for that one manicure same with like the nail cleanser when it comes to removals as well how much if you're buying their foils how much is that costing they give you that breakdown so that you can use it when you're calculating how much profit you're actually making it's normally brands that do this so for example if you go to a a college and you do a gel polish course they're not going to tell you about pr prices and how much you should charge but if you train with OPI for example that's when they do like the product breakdown it's definitely a lot easier when the brand does that work for you if they don't you kind of have to you learn through experience anyway like if you have a tub of wax I managed to find you a visual aid to show you so this is a tub of strip wax this is honey wax it's by the brand Hive Hive is known to be quite 
affordable when it comes to their waxes let's just say this cost five pounds and half of it is used up if you do a full leg wax from experience i know that you pretty much use about half of the wax so i've used two pound fifty worth of wax on top of that i need to calculate spatulas cotton wool gel cleanser after wax lotion that all adds up as well couch roll let's just say you have a hundred spatulas and you paid two pound fifty for that box it's not even 1p for that spatula. Same with the cotton wool. Let's round it up and say that your products cost you three pounds to do this full leg wax. It's not just product cost that you need to think about, it's time as well, and I'm gonna talk about time in a minute. When it comes to beauty products, you are easily gonna be making profit when it comes to how much product you're using, but it's mainly about the service and the, the time that you're spending on this treatment. But just to give you an idea of, like if you didn't have a brand that broke it down for you this is how you can possibly calculate it if you want to know exactly how much profit you're making when it comes to product usage another thing i want to mention while we're on the topic of waxing is a full body wax i'm going to give you my personal opinion this portion of the video is very very personal i don't have one set price for a full body wax because each and every client has a different definition for what a full body wax is. One client might say, I want it to include my full legs, full arms, underarms and bikini area. Another client might say, that's not a full body, I want my full stomach and my back and my face. My price list pretty much has every body part on there. So if they want a full body, they pick what they want and they can add the price up and that's their total. Or I just do it for them, they tell me what body parts they want wax and I total it for them. It does come up quite high and people are like oh but this salon does it f a full body for 40 pounds. Great but I don't. I personally feel like when it comes to a full body I'm using up more wax and it takes time. A full body is it can take two hours again it, it can take longer or less. Some salons do some form of discount when you're getting more than one area wax so for example if you're gonna get three air three body areas waxed you get 10 percent off yeah they say oh because you're getting your full body done we'll give you a discount and that's completely personal but if you're just wondering what i do because I, I get questions like oh i know what people do i just want to know what you do mel just tell me what you do well i personally don't want to charge less when i'm doing more some of you might highly disagree with that but it's just what I do. When it comes to pricing it's so different and um, that's why I'm giving you like a, a rough guideline of things that you need to consider and then as a business owner you make the final call, you make the calculations and you make the final decision. Even though I may be using more product when it comes to a full body wax it's not just the profit that you make from the product it is the amount of time that it takes as well and another treatment that's a really good example to use is a massage. So a full body massage you're using you're only using oil. With a massage it's mainly the actual treatment, the service and the time. That's why they normally cost around £60 for an hour, roughly, it's like a pound a minute. When it comes to product cost as well, a lot of people do like add-on stuff, like add a jelly face mask to the facial and it will be an extra £10. Add-on nail art, nail art is quite varied as well. So some people charge, some people charge £5 for nail art, some people break it down and do £50 50p per nail. Not everyone wants nail art on every single nail, they just want it on one or two nails. When it comes to rhinestone nail art, they charge about a pound or two pound extra. When it comes to like water decals, you can easily c calculate how much profit you're making as well. So if you buy a sheet of water decals, count how many are on there, divide it, that's how much the actual decal, one decal is costing, looking at how much time it takes for you to do as well. Water decals don't take a lot of time, compared to like something like hand painting nail art, that is gonna cost you a lot more, it's more effort, it's gonna take a lot longer because um, it's a hand painted nail art design. There was this one salon years ago when I was 16, I got French, which I think people should charge extra for. Some people don't class French as nail art, I personally do and I think you should charge extra for it, it takes more time, you need to perfect it. But yeah, she did French and then on one nail I asked her to do like a flower design and she did it with acrylic paint, she like hand painted it and she charged me five pounds on top. I don't know how she calculated it but just as an example of how much people are charging her for I'll let you know. But that was ten years ago, 
and I'm gonna mention that in my next thing that you need to consider which is time. So I've mentioned time throughout the video and now I'm gonna dedicate this portion of the video to time. So going back to that scenario I gave you, Salon A has a therapist who was very quick. They were charging £15 for that Brazilian wax but she was also doing that Brazilian wax in seven minutes. Salon B, that wax took around 20 minutes but they do like half an hour slots. So in an hour, Salon A can do eight clients and is making, let's get my calculator out, my maths is awful. In an hour, Salon A is making 120 pounds. Let's just say the therapist is getting paid nine pound an hour. Let's just take that out, 111 pounds. Salon B can do two clients in an hour and let's just say they were charging 45 pounds for that Brazilian wax. That's 90 pounds, take away nine pounds to pay their staff, that's 81 pounds. Time is money. If you are a therapist who is very quick, you can kind of get away with charging less um, to attract more clients and you're still making a decent amount. You may not wanna do that. You may think, well, just cause I'm quick, why should I charge less? Fair point, fair enough. If you're a mobile beauty therapist, another thing when it comes to time is travel charge. First of all, the standard price for petrol is around 30p a mile. This does depend on your car, what type of car you have and how you drive as well. And that's just for your petrol, it's not really including the time that you're spending to, to drive. That's why some beauty therapists charge 50p a mile, some people charge a pound a mile. Some beauty therapists don't charge if you live within five miles. If you live further than five miles, let's, let's just say you live six miles away, then they charge um, a pound a mile, for example. You need to consider congestion charge if you're going into an area that tra charges for that, parking as well. Some beauty therapists, just to make life a lot easier, they just add the travel price into the actual price list of the treatments. One thing that really helped when it comes to how much people charge for travel is going to a beauty forum. There's one called Salon Geek. Type in uh, how much do mobile beauty therapists charge for travel and then you get loads of professionals who have written what they charge and that's where you see it's so varied um, but it just gives you an idea of what people are charging. The final thing that I'm going to talk about in the time category is what year we're in. Some salons charge the same price as they did 10 years ago and I don't recommend you do that. Like a manicure used to cost £10 10 years ago and now it costs 20 to £30. Pounds. Money is not the same value as it was 10 years ago so you definitely need to make sure that your prices are updated. If you are a beauty therapist, comment any tips down below when it comes to pricing as well. Uh, share your experience and your advice, it will be really helpful. Um, I feel like nowadays beauty therapists are really supporting each other now. Um, it's not a competition anymore. So, um, but if you disagree with that, comment down below. Let's create a little beauty forum in the comment section. Um, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.